congratulations. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel like I got punched in the face a few times, but other than that, I feel pretty good. So what did you have to tell yourself, you know, to get to the place that you got? Uh, nothing special. Just hard work consistently, kind of get out of my own way on a lot of things. Just, you know, I have the skill set. I have more than enough experience. Uh, it's just letting stuff go, having fun, just reminding myself. I do this because I love it and because it's, it's a lot of fun. Like, that was fun for me. Like... I, I can't even describe the feeling. It, you know, it was great to have even the small crowd in there again, but I just love fighting and just be, be free in there and have fun. So was there anything that surprised you about your opponent? Uh, not particularly. I knew he was going to be tough. Um, you know, he hit just as hard as I expected. Uh, I, the way that I fought him, I, it changed a little bit more than I thought I would. I didn't think I'd be able to stay in striking range and be a little more disciplined and strike with him like I did. And it actually kind of... I had to change my game plan a little bit. You know, I was doing a couple things right, a couple things I should have done better. Um, wanted to blitz him, get inside right away. I kind of stayed too tall and hesitated in kind of the red zone, and I, you know, ate a couple shots for it. And that, then I realized, like, oh, I can actually stay pretty structured because he's just going wide, and I actually had a better, you know, time picking off shots and returning my own. So that was kind of a nice thing to know, like, oh, yeah, I can strike with people. Like, I don't have to charge in all the time. So that was good. So you mentioned changing your game plan up a little bit. Was submitting him in that game plan? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, almost all my wins were by submission, so that's always part of the game plan. It's just how much do I have to hit him before I can grab a hold of him and choke him. And you mentioned opening another gym. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Or opening a gym with Rufus Sport? Yeah, so like, we'll definitely be affiliated. You know, I'm always going to, you know, I'm always going to be around Rufus Sport and working with them, you know, for the rest of my life. Uh, but I haven't got an exact location yet. It'll definitely be like n somewhat nearby in southeast Wisconsin. Um, it'll start off probably just mainly as a jiu-jitsu gym, but you know we'll see how many people are interested. Might get a couple, you know, have some striking classes and uh, MMA classes. But uh, I want to teach, you know, not karate style jiu-jitsu, but real jiu-jitsu that'll work in you know fight scenarios. You know what I mean? Like stuff that'll actually works. You know how to take people down, how to not get hit in the head when you take them down, and then how to dominate someone on the ground. And I'm not implying you're retiring anytime soon, but is this you setting up, uh, you know, your life outside of fighting? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I don't plan on retiring anytime soon, but uh, again, I can't fight forever. Um, and even though I don't plan on retiring soon, I'm definitely on the later half of my career, if we're being honest. I already got, you know, almost 50 fights, so i uh, got to set stuff up outside of that. And, you know, I've really grown to have a passion for coaching and teaching um, outside of just fighting, you know, especially helping up the new up-and-comers, even at Rufus Sport, I'm you know, the head fight coach or uh, grappling coach for the fight team now, so it's like, it's great to help those guys, you know, I'll have my little thing that I do, uh, you know, in affiliation with Rufus Sport on the side, you know, just to start get that going, so then when I do end up retiring from fighting, it's already kind of picking up steam and I can have a smooth transition. And going into this fight, you were the underdog. Does that take the pressure off or does that give you more pressure or does it matter? I, it doesn't matter. I. I maybe twice in my UFC career I haven't been the underdog, and I've got probably like 14 UFC fights now, so I just assume that I'm a heavy underdog all the time. The only thing I, th I heard, uh, I was the biggest under underdog on the card, I think, which wouldn't surprise me. But, yeah, it's, it's kind of old news at this point. I think Vanessa wins that one. I think Vanessa was the biggest underdog. Ah. I, I, I could be wrong, though. It changes all the time. It depends on who you're looking at. Yeah. Um, and final question for me is, when do you want to get back in there? I'd like to get one in before the end of the year um, so I can get fat and happy and enjoy the holidays. But, you know, we'll see what the UFC has in mind, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. The only one for me is you, you talked about there was a couple of things you weren't so happy with your performance out there. What what sort of things were you were you mentioning? Because it, I mean, one I have to ask you before that, what did what did your coaches and that say to you in the the beginning of the second round? You know, the first round you definitely seemed like the game plan was to push forward. You know, you were definitely pushing the pace. You know, took some shots for it. You know, but what did they say to you in the second round? That sort of uh, did it switch up anything? The game plan, anything going in the second round, or was it just? you know, just get the head on, on, you know, in a better place. So the, the first part of your question and what I wasn't happy with was getting just hit in the face so cleanly so many times. I would rather not do that. kind of leads to a longer, more successful career. It's not and showing. Then, <laughs> that's good. I'm sure it'll show later. But uh, to the second part of your question, uh, yeah, my coach, you know, 
what they were saying to me is stuff I already understood I had to change anyway. We have a very synergistic relationship. You know, I learned, truly learned striking and, you know, most of my MMA skills in the Rufus Sports system. So, you know, we can kind of read each other's minds. I, I kind of have an idea what they're going to say before they say it. Um, I was kind of hesitating, and even my coach Chris said, he's like, you're kind of hesitating when you go in. You got to commit when you go in. We need a tighter guard. You know, get to your X guard so you can pick stuff off and grab them in return. Um, so I started adding that in. I could, when I saw some of the kicks were open, you know, Coach Duke was calling for leg kicks to commit to him. Don't try to pull him. Um, so different stuff like that, and just being a little more disciplined and understanding. Like, you know, they always tell me, have confidence in your striking. And you know, especially in that second round, I had confidence in my striking. I let that left hand go. I stayed in the fire a little bit. I kept my guard up, uh, you know, and I, I rocked him. I tried to get him out of there, but he was too tough, so I had to take him down and choke him. And once you got his back, did you did you feel pretty confident as soon as you slipped the arm that it was done? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was so hurt already, too. I just kind of threw him on the floor. And when I got on top of him, I was like, yeah, you're not – you're too small, buddy. You ain't going anywhere. And, like – and it's nothing against him. He's a very tough competitor, and he's very quick, but uh, – you know, I just got next level skills on the ground, especially if I already rocked you, in the, you know, rocked your stuff a couple of times. Yeah, and last for me, you know, you mentioned that you and you and Duke got such a good relationship. You can kind of hear what he's saying without saying anything. In this particular fight, the, the commentary team was talking about the, the the secret languages that teams often have. Does Duke have anything? Does he have any crazy language that he likes to throw out there during a the fight that maybe somebody wouldn't pick up on or or understand? Uh, that's a good question, because if he did, I wouldn't be able to tell you, because it'd be normal to me, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's something in there. Uh, yeah, but, I, I, you know, there's things where, again, I, I know what they're going to say before they're going to say it, and that kind of helps. It should be that way. If you ever go to your corner and you're like, I don't know what to do. Either you really got rocked bad, and you just need to go after that person, or you need to figure out what you're doing in the practice room that you don't understand each other. Yeah, Makes sense. Congrats on the victory. Thanks, man. And uh, just to piggyback off of Amy's point, congrats on the win. And those numbers definitely fluctuate because this was pretty much like a Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor. You were a big underdog. Money came in against you, moved you to a 7-1 underdog, and you won via a rear naked choke, coincidentally. So a lot of people are mad tonight. Or your team is super happy. Yeah, my team's super, super happy. <laughs> um, talk about weathering that storm because that first round was definitely rough. I know you have to have self-confidence. What did the team, what did the corner say to you to say, like, hey, look, just, you know, you've been here before. You're the veteran. Let's go to work. Uh, they didn't even mention that. It was just technical advice. And, I mean, you know, you got a choice when you're in there and you start getting hit. You can either kind of fold up and give up or you can bite down in your mouthpiece, suck it up, get out there and fight back. And I didn't feel like going out, you know, and being a little wuss and laying down for him. So I was like, you know, you're going to hit me. I'm going to hit you as hard as I can back. And we're going to figure out who's, you know, who's got the tougher chin tonight, I guess. When did you feel him, uh, that momentum change, when somebody started to break? Because clearly by the end of the first round, he had totally went your direction. Yeah, uh, I could feel that he didn't like being pressured so much. And even though there wasn't as much activity as I would have liked, I, even in his last fights, I, I think the small cage kind of helped. And I think... He's not used to guys not letting him just back away freely. Every other fight I watched, they would kind of let him get space. They would pursue, you know, the first sequence, and they wouldn't go for the second or third. They kind of let him get off on his own, bounce around a little bit, and, like, hop in and out on some strikes. I just tried to stay in his face as much as possible. I was like, yeah, you can hit me, but I'm going to be right here the whole time, and you're going to have to deal with it. So come hell or high water, we're fighting each other. And, you know, I knew I had the motor to do it, and I showed that. Yes, you did. Congrats, man. Thank you. Thanks.